Hi, I'm Andy, and this is the Fascinating Guide to the 2014 World Cup. The question nobody's asking is, what is the Fascinating Guide to the 2014 World Cup? Well, think back to the last time you took a random walk through Wikipedia, clicking on page after page of things that were interesting or curious but had nothing to do with your day-to-day -day basis. Still, you found yourself getting lost as you ventured into the rabbit hole. That's what this is all about. The World Cup is a cauldron of amazing moments and facts about cultures that you don't normally visit or think of unless you're from Ivory Coast. Apologies. What we've done is we've restaged the entire event. Okay, the structure is the same, but instead of having the football teams decide the action, we are pitting fascinating fact against fascinating fact and letting a group of venerable referees decide which one has the merit to advance. That's how teams move through the fascinating tournament we've set up. There are 32 teams, which means dozens of opportunities to learn something you never knew before and find fascinating. They're set up into eight groups, four teams per group, and what we do first is proceed through that group phase just like they do. So we start at the top, group A, headlined by the host Brazil. Always educational, occasionally entertaining, here's the fascinating guide to group A. So here's how it works in a group. Everyone plays everyone once, and if you win, you get three points. If you tie, you get one point. At the end of all this, the two teams with the most points move on to the elimination phase. So our opening match here is Brazil against Croatia. Brazil brings out Oswaldo Cruz. Now let's just level with each other here. What did you do in your 20s? Because I watched a lot of sports and played a lot of video games and gained a lot of weight. In his 20s, Oswaldo Cruz halted the bubonic plague and led a national crusade against yellow fever. Then he mandated smallpox vaccines, which so irked the masses that they revolted. But then four years later, there was a smallpox epidemic. Croatia counters with the sea organ of Zadar. Architect Nikola Basic, back, Basic, um, basic designed this always-on oceanic organ, which riffs on the local tradition of spontaneous four-voice a cappella singing. So how does it work? The tide from outside Zadar pushes water into columns, which in turn push air and play organ pipes. Different parts of the organ combine for different harmonies depending on where you stand. To prevail over this first match, we have the Faust with the most. It's Adam Faust! Adam, give me Harry Potter and the Sea Organ of Zadar 2-0. All right, we're going to update the table and bring you to the second match, Mexico-Cameroon. Mexico's opening is That Sinking Feeling. Cortez built Mexico City on the Aztec ruins of Tenochtitlan, which was a city on an island in a lake. There's an aquifer down there now, and as it empties, the street level lowers at a rate of 3 to 4 inches per year. The Palace of Fine Arts has sunk so far that its main floor is now its basement. And if you visit the original Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the walk to the altar is uphill. Cameroon brings out Isaac Manioli. Despite being snowless, Cameroon has participated in the Winter Olympics once in 2002. They sent one athlete. Isaac Manioli, an architect living in Wisconsin. To qualify for the 15-kilometer cross-country ski event, he had to create Cameroon's National Skiing Federation. Then he finished dead last, but his goal wasn't meddling. It was to raise awareness of the prevalence and threat of AIDS in his home country. Refing this one, little sis, Emma, what you got? Cameroon 2-0, he finally wins! Next up, it's high scrabble scores for everyone. It's Brazil versus Mexico. For Brazil, it's Tiradentes Day. Tiradentes was Joaquim José da Silva Javier's nickname. It means tooth puller because in addition to being a miner, a cattle driver, and an 18th century revolutionary hero, he was a dentist by trade. Tiradentes Day is April 21st, the day he was hung for leading the rebels. Then he was cut up and a declaration of his infamy was written in his own blood. Now it's national holiday! Mexico had the shortest presidency ever. Alright, hang with me here. It's 1913. General Victoriano Huerta overthrows the Mexican president, vice president, and attorney general. To maintain the image of legitimacy, he keeps Pedro Lacerena's foreign minister. With no one above him, Lacerena sends to the office of president and holds it for 45 minutes, long enough to name Huerta his interior minister. Then he resigns. Why interior minister? After foreign minister, it was next in line for the presidency. Our next referee coincidentally has the same last name as me, more coincidentally has the same parents. Christian, tell us what you got. Don't be president just to pad your resume. 3-1 Brazil. That done, next we have the matchup of the killer seas, Cameroon and Croatia. Cameroon brings out Limnic Eruption. Limnic Eruption happens when something like an earthquake or landslide loosens up dissolved carbon dioxide in deep water, which rushes to the surface and suffocates everything nearby. 
This has only been witnessed twice in history in events that killed almost 2,000 people. In Lake Manoon in 1984, and in Lake Neos in 1986. Where are these lakes? Northwest Cameroon. For Croatia, it's the necktie? Well, King Louis XIII had hired some Croatian mercenaries to fight alongside the French in the Thirty Years' War. They all showed up with fancy scarves wound around their necks, which caught on quickly back in Paris. The French term for Croatians and the Croatian term for themselves combined to give us the cravat, and centuries of men gently choking themselves in the name of high fashion. To preside here, Eric Tomlinson. Croatia 1, Cameroon 0. Suit up. And with that, we move into our final round of pairings, starting with Brazil versus Cameroon. For Brazil, it's Ia de Queimada Grande, which sounds fun, but this picture is as close as we're going to get to this Brazilian island, because every inch of land down there is covered with the Golden Lance Head, a brand of pit viper so lethal its venom melts the skin. One bite and you die from organ failure within two hours. How do they survive? They eat migrating birds. Worst tourist destination in the world. Cameroon's last shot is the tail of the jersey. Led by retirement age star Roger Mila, the 1990 Cameroon team made the World Cup quarterfinals the farthest an African team had ever gone. On the road there, Mila became the oldest World Cup goal scorer ever. Now on the way, after a qualifying match, Mila threw his jersey into the crowd in celebration as players do. Who caught it? A six-year-old Samuel Eto'o, captain of the 2014 Cameroon team and currently the highest paid soccer player in the world. For match number five, our referee is Alex Olisi. Alex, what you got? Tugged heartstrings over melted flesh. Cameroon, two to one. And we close out group A with Mexico versus Croatia. Mexico brings us jailbreak. Okay, in Mexico, it's legal to break out of prison. Let me repeat that. In Mexico, it is perfectly legal to break out of prison. As long as you don't break any laws doing it or hurt anyone, the Mexican legal system does not penalize inmates for springing themselves. The laws respect citizens' fundamental desire to be free. If they catch you, you just go back to doing your time. Oh, but they will open fire on anyone attempting to escape. Did Croatia save the best for last? It's Nikola Tesla! Born in what is now Croatia, Tesla alleged that when he worked for Thomas Edison, he was promised $50,000 if he could improve Edison's generators. He did it, got stiffed, and quit. Then he formed his own company and got fired from it. Then he became a ditch digger, and then he revolutionized electricity. Rumor has it he was in line for the 1915 Nobel Prize, but declined because he would have to share it with Edison. And to close out Group A, Ryan Staten. Ryan, what do you have? Mexico, two to one. Oh, and after a sprint through Group A, it's Croatia and Cameroon advancing. Come on back for Group B, we've got Chilean combat tactics, Dutch dams, Spanish sweethearts, and Australia. 